Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a South Shore High School great and all-city performer who used to light up the scoreboard, averaging 27 points per outing. She once scored 72 points in one game, which is a state record. See how she just flipped the script on that 2-7, which is my favorite number? You already know we off to a good start. Her team set a championship mentality that resonates for South Shore girls basketball to this day. Who could forget the days of August Martin girls running things? Did Mary Bertram unmatched championship runs? Now, South Shore dominate New York City girls basketball, thanks to our next guest. After dominating the PSAL and Catholic School League, yeah, she dominated the Catholic School League too. This basketball head chose to attend the University of Virginia. She only spent a year at UVA before transferring to Northeastern University. At NU, she found a home and a program that had her back. She went from averaging 14 points. Then she moved up to 20 points her junior year. And as a senior, averaged 21 points a game. She left Northeastern with a point total of 1,551 in just three years, which puts her in second place, scoring all time. Her 785 career rebounds also puts her second. But her 220 career blocks tripled the nearest competitor. And her 260 steals set a new NU record as well. She was voted America East Player of the Year, All East and District One All America. Artists set a new standard for NU post players and elevated the stature of Northeastern basketball throughout the nation. In 1997, she played for the Charlotte Sting in the very first season of the WNBA. So that made her the first PSL player to play in the league. After a short stint in the WNBA, she packed up and moved to Turkey, where she became an international star. So, without further ado, help me welcome to the show, New York City legend, South Shore High School and Northeastern University Hall of Fame inductee, Katasha Artis. You ready? You ready? You ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped into, into the, the world, world of chaos, chaos. Where, where everybody, everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Hello, hello there. Hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm great, I'm great, and highly blessed and favored. Can't complain. Me as well, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited and nervous and everything, but honored and privileged and everything else. This is awesome. This is awesome. Listen, you deserve it. It's about time <laughs> we bring the flowers to you. Right? Thank you. This is the real deal. This is no games, not trying to blow no smoke. You earned this. Appreciate you. No doubt. I just want to let you know New York City ain't forget about you. Thank you. Thank you. No I, hey, I ain't forget about New York City. Listen. That's right. <laughs> That's home, That's baby. Right. <laughs> my guy, Mecca Smith, was like, yo, first of all, you got to get my girl to show. She yeah. put it down too long and rep New York City too strong. Yo, Mecca, Mecca is my guy. He used to practice with us. We wouldn't have made it to the garden if he wasn't practicing with us. He got us ready. He was Mecca's that down. dude. He's that dude, for real. He used to Let give us work. He helped us a lot. I'm going to tell you a crazy story right before we start. My best friend played out in Westbury. And, you know, my guy wasn't a big deal at all, but he played high school and he played at Westbury. Mm -hmm. So he was telling me the story. He was like, yo, you know, 
one dude, I just remember lighting my ass up, man. <laughs> and he was like, this, this dude, o Omeka, Omeka. I said, Omeka Smith. I said, yeah. he just was on the show. He said, yo, Pooh, that guy told me a new asshole, man. Yeah. He was a beast, the Terminator, like, in silent with it. He didn't talk a lot, but, boy, he was right, getting right, out right. work. Like, yo, the intensity was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Katasha, who introduced you to the game? Um, okay, so my first coach at South Shore was actually Fred Lawrence, right? So okay. he introduced me to the game. I'm which, I was what you would consider a late. Bloomer. I knew nothing about basketball, but I was always, you know, athletic. So I went to 275, right? I think they call it Thelma J. Hamilton now. Yo, come and... up, come up, come up, come up. <laughs> First of all, I had Ephraim Whitehead on the show. Exactly. Rolf Phelps on the show. Yes, like, sir. What is in the water over there, man? Listen, listen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now I used to watch them, but I had no idea that girls played, you know. So Mr. Lawrence used to come, and he was trying to get, I guess, because he coached at South Shore, so he would, you know, they would use the gym to practice. And he stopped right. me in the hallway and was like, hey, you kind of tall. You should play basketball. And this was like, I was my senior year, and I'm like, okay, cause, and he's like, if you play, you, can, you don't have to go to gym in the middle of the day. You just practice at the end of the day, which was great for me because we didn't have showers. You so love that, you love that part right there. That part. So I was like, yeah, I had no idea. I mean, I literally remember when they came in and we went to practice, and I didn't even know what a layup was called. All I said was, how do you shoot the ball and keep running? Like, knew nothing. And, <laughs> and then from there, I ended up going to South Shore. Um, I only played three years at South Shore because I was in a special program at, at 275, so I skipped the grade. So when I went to South Shore, I started off in the 10th grade. And that's just how, it, you know, I got three years at South Shore. It just, I'm with, and then after that, I started playing with Mr. Davis. He, I played with him in the summertime. I would say that's where I got my experience experience. He, I was, I'm one of the original Mika players, and um, that's when I kind of just, jumped in and I loved it and it was just amazing like I, didn't, I had no idea I was used to playing football in the street with the boys and stuff and now you're telling me like I could just destroy these girls like I, it just didn't feel like real work at some times you know because I was so used to competing against boys and all other things but right yeah it was amazing it was a great run but Mr. Lawrence introduced me and then I played under Mika for summer ball and then after that it's just history you know all right we're we, we gonna touch on all that where, where are you from in Brooklyn uh, Brownsville. We're from Brownsville. Up by the Towers, Atlantic Towers, Burton yeah, Street, Perkman Street. Yeah, 55 Park. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I much actually, talent like, out there. Yeah, when I wasn't looking for practice with Mr. Davis, I was at 55 Park on the side court. I had to work myself up to the to them asking to play. It took me two years to get invited to run the full. But, you know, goals, man. It just kept me, it kept me motivated. But yeah, 55 Park is where I honed every day, every day, all the time. Rain, sleep, snow, it didn't matter. So <laughs> I, I could go, I could call my guy Two from Atlantic Tower. Oh yeah, Two, that's like, my cousin. That's my cousin. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Listen, yeah. Man. New York City basketball, six degrees of separation. Yeah, period. You you just never know. You never know. It's like we all related. We all connected. I always say, I always tell my kids, you know, when I'm at work, listen, it's always good to be a good person because you never know who you might need in the future or who you might meet in the future that may do some good for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that. I believe that. I live by that, actually. I try to be good to everybody because you just never know, you know? And, right. then, and the flip of that is, too, you... you you might need somebody to be good to somebody you love, you know? So, right. yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. You, you know, you starting off, you know, you had a little rough patch in the beginning. How was that first game, that very first game with the referees, coaches, you know, people in the stands? How was that? Um. Okay, so that's memorable because my first actual, like, referee game was on my 14th birthday. Wow. <laughs> so I took the number 14 and it's history from there. I was just I was just happy I could get the number and I was turning 14. So that first game, 
it was amazing. I didn't, I didn't really, you know, I don't think I didn't have like a great game, but it wasn't horrible, you know. And it wasn't as at first I was kind of nervous. I do remember yeah. though, like Mr. Davis, he was like what struck me the most because we used to play in this tournament at Henry Street, and back then, like all the great players, most of them came from Manhattan, you know. So we was playing, I don't remember exactly who, but what stood out to me was the way I wasn't used to game prep. So him saying, oh, this girl likes to do this, and she likes to do this, I, being from Brownsville, took it like, why y'all scared of her, though? So we scared, we gonna let her do what she like? Like, why are we scared of her? And that right. just, I wanted to be that player. I was like, okay, my goal was to be the player that the other coach was scared of, because I felt like Mr. Davis was scared, but now that I understand, he was just trying to tell us to get ready. But, you know, instinctually, I was like, well, so we supposed to be scared? Like, <laughs> So that, that was just my goal, to be respected amongst my peers. Like, that was my thing my whole career. I didn't care about nothing else. I just wanted to strike fear in people's heart when I walked in the gym. <laughs> so at, at that time, when you're, like, 14 years old, who's the best player in the neighborhood? Uh, hmm. That's tough. You asking a hard one, because I'm still close to my guys. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Name them, name them. I don't know. Uh, Look, Tufi was always, names, so I always them. felt so. like my cousin David, he was nice. He was real smooth with it. Um, We had, in my hood, mm, then we had the twins. We had Sad. You know, everybody in my hood was nice. I'm not going to lie. I can't, I can't, all of them dudes was balling. I, I felt like we had like NBA caliber on my, on my block. Like, I ain't yeah. going to hold you. <laughs> yeah. True, true. So now I mentioned in the uh early part of the intro how August Martin and Mary Burton used to run things. Mm -hmm. And it, look, me, you know, being at Lincoln, early on and there was too much girls basketball because it was just like August Martin. Then it yeah. was like Burton, Burton, Burton. Absolutely. Burton. Then you guys came on the scene and I was like, hold up. Yeah. It changed. It, it went from Queen to Manhattan. It came right back to Brooklyn. Period. That that was that's that's right. <laughs> no, and that, honestly, because that's how that was my mindset. Like I felt like Brooklyn, as far as like girls. I mean, well, we had Ruthie. Like we had flashes in the pan, but we couldn't put together like a team that was respected in Brooklyn, like the teams in the other boroughs. And I'm right, not right. talking about individual right. players. You're right, individual, yeah, but, but it was we didn't really had teams. You know what I'm saying? So like. And I'm not trying to take away from them teams, but they were like, you know, power teams. So they had like five players, five athletic players. And then then you had most Brooklyn teams had one or two good players on the team. So position by position, they couldn't match up. So that was awesome. That was just something in the back of my head. I'm putting my burrow on my back, period. I had Ruth Lovelace on here who played for the yeah. high. She was averaging like 38, but nobody else was scoring. Right, right. And I played with Ruth. Ruthie played for Mika, too. So we played together. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay. And then we had D. Posey, but she went to Bertram. But she's from Brownsville, too. You know what I'm saying? So, it, 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 you know, you had those those teams from Manhattan and then August Martin. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like, I'm very proud of what we did at South Shore, you know, because it's a legitimate program now, you know. Now, not that it wasn't before, but because before, you know, we were, they were getting to, like, the first round. We weren't getting out of Brooklyn, you know. But now, you know, that's that's expected. And and the only way to something can be expected, you gotta do it one time first. You gotta do it the first time, then it becomes an expectation. So we did that. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I can't agree with you more. Um, <laughs> we did the same thing, Tiny and I, Sean Williams, Bernard Mitchell, Dave Adam Banjo at Lincoln in nineteen eighty six. And then people start saying we can win. Yeah. You just gotta yeah. Exactly. You got to be that first. Somebody who win that first one. Yeah, yeah. What year was it for you guys? Uh, we didn't win, but we went. We we played. We made it to the Garden in two thousand. I mean, in nineteen ninety, and that was the first time that girls were allowed to play in the Garden because before that we always had to play at the Felt Farm. So right. we made it to the Garden in ninety. I wish we would have made it the year before because my point guard, Trina Strowman, well, she was our point and our two. She was a beast, too. She's from Brownsville, too. We couldn't get it done with her. 
But we got it done that next year. But yeah, it was amazing. And I remember because the big deal was it was, we was actually going to be playing on the garden floor. And my teammate, Claudia, my big girl, we was just like, oh my God, the Bulls played here at some point. We like trying to touch everything. Michael Jordan might have sat in the seat. Like we were just real silly with it. It was a, it was a great experience though. It was so surreal. It was so surreal. Sometimes getting there that first time is more of a joint experience to let people know, look, we can do this. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And then absolutely. Now, they just might as well give y'all the trophy and free. Period. Yeah, right just here. pencil us in. That's play right. Game play. Y'all go ahead and play, but we know what's going to happen. That's right. That's called legacy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, name some of the other tournaments where you competed with some of the top girls in the city. All right. Um, okay, so we had Hemi Street. We had West 4th Street. Definitely. Um, as far as, like, organized and, you know, attached to schools, we always had the exceptional seniors game. Um, the wheelchair classic. Um, we had man, and then the oh, summertime. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to that wheelchair because I need to know what Burrow won. Oh, we won when I played. <laughs> We're gonna make some noise for that. I, I just want to ask. I kind of knew that. Yeah, I yeah, no. And, and like once I once once and yeah, once I understood it and we got there, I understood the work that needed to be done. It was done. It was it was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> Who were some of the girls that was on that team? Um, so with the wheelchair classic, we had Rhonda Singleton. We had Kareen Jones was on that team. Um, who else did we have? I think Beth Shapiro was on a couple of those teams from Brooklyn Tech. Mm. Autumn Smoot was on a couple of Kendra Nelson, like yeah, we had some strong teams. We had some I mean, all of John Jay. John Jay had a good team. I know they had. I don't remember had Bridget was one, but we had some strong teams. We had some strong teams, and wow. uh, that was a big thing too, because you know that inter uh, public school versus Catholic school thing. We had that big time too. So oh, it was, I'm, I'm definitely gonna touch on that. <laughs> definitely gonna touch on that. <laughs> like, you, you definitely showed out in that game. Yeah, yeah, we so, had, we had, yeah, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> that's, they don't do that for the boys no more. They don't do it? No. Why is this too intense? I can imagine. I, can, I yeah, it's probably just a lot, a lot to handle. It's po trust me, it's all politics. I don't think the coaches care, but it's politics, right. the higher ups. Got you. All right. Got you. So, yeah. With, with you being at South Shore and coming to your own, did, did, your coach, who was the coach at the time? So when my first year, it was Fred Lawrence. Um, then I had Barry Goldsmith. Um, he coached us since the last two years. Um, How was your relationship with them to this day? Um, it's pretty. I mean, it's not bad. I have um, Mr. Lawrence got he has a special place in my heart because I feel like he changed the trajectory of my life. Got you know, you. Got and. You. And that's that's never going to change because basketball was not on my radar. I, not to say, like, you know, I was always an intelligent kid, and I had actually passed the test and was scheduled to go to Brooklyn Tech. But I, I just think that um, just the overall yeah, trajectory of my life and not actually having to pay for college and things like that. So he's always got a, a special place in my heart. And Mr. Goldsmith, he does too. We have a good relationship. Like, I still, you know, keep in touch with them and, you know, okay. send Christmas cards and things like that, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm still close with all my, all my, all my, all my coaches. My college coach, you know, my summer league coaches. Everybody, like you coach, you coach. That's that means a lot to me, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I put up that post with you scoring that seventy-two points. Oh, man. Somebody commented, so you're just gonna forget about Epiphany Prince, one hundred points. Right. But I, when I was reading the record. They said with well, just 72 points was the state record. She came afterwards. Yeah, she broke it. She broke it. No, I get it. So I wish people, when they understand when we put up these posts. Right. It is what it is. She came later on. Right. right? You know, no doubt. Right. But at the time, you held the record. Oh, yeah, definitely. That definitely. I, and I just want to know. I just want to know. You know, sometimes people <laughs> get, you know, go too far. And I don't mind. People making comments. It's all good. Yeah, no, nah, I, 
I mean, I don't worry about it too much. And the crazy thing is, like, that 72-point thing, it was it was a gift and a curse. Like, I had, it, that was, I can't even say that. It was just, like, the everything was going in. It wasn't, and, you know, at that time, as far as, like, how women's basketball was covered, like, my coach took a lot of heat for it. We really didn't run up that score. Like, it wasn't, we didn't, he took me out. I didn't even play the whole game. Honestly, I played like the first half and half of the third quarter, and I was out. And and my team, my entire team, had a great game. And the other team, they were competing. It was just one of those days, you know. And it was a great thing, but I didn't like the fact that like part of it at that time it was trying to make it seem like I was a chucker and things like that. But that wasn't the case. Literally, everything was going in. Like it was just one of those days. And what team was y'all playing? Erasmus. <laughs> so that was the thing too because that was like a little rivalry right there and yeah. they were tough you know they were competing we just had a great game I just listen you when you drop that you know that magical nine number was two and seven equals out to because those are my two favorite numbers right, right? born in July 2nd so okay I'm July 8th things, yeah those things right Right. Makes sense to me. So I saw it, then I saw it like, damn, she averaged 27 in high school. This is not coincidence. You're right. right. Yeah. Sometimes you can't you can't argue with some of the things that happen with the most high. Right? Right. Those things are meant to happen. Sorry, uh, Rasmus. Y'all gotta eat that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they gotta eat it. It's I mean, it is what it is. And the crazy thing, it was like, so after the 72. Coincidentally, that's when Lisa dropped her 105 point game, and it, you know, yeah, it was a whole thing. You know, it was it was a great time. So it's just, it's just some ripples throughout the country. That's what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. I was, you know, what you call inspiring. You know, let people know that it's okay. <laughs> talk, talk. That's right. That's what we do. You gotta be inspired. Somebody gotta push you. So I feel like hey, I listen. pushed them. You know what I'm saying? That's I push right. people. They wouldn't have thought about it before. I made it okay. <laughs> Listen, I never saw you play, but I read very well. Okay. And when I do my research and everything that you sent me, I was reading. I was opening up and making it big so I could read everything and see and, and play it back through here. And then I talked to some people. And when I talked to some people, some credible people, and then it's like, yo, gee, she was the real deal. Now, I say this a lot on the God side, right? Mm -hmm. New York City legend, Ron Strickland. New York City legend, Skip to my Lou. Half man, half amazing, right? Right. I had uh, uh, Laura Mealy, who I consider a New York City legend from Christ and King. She was okay. the first person to win New York City bas uh, basketball oh, okay. in the state of New York City. Right? Okay. But you rarely hear that on the women's side. Right. Right? You hear like one or two epiphany, Shamika, right? You don't hear that. And the thing that you did, if a guy did it, he'll be considered a legend. Right. Right. That's, this dude that didn't do half of the stuff that you did. And it's a legend. Right. You did it in the street. You did it. <laughs> In high school, college, in the high level, and on the pro level. Yeah. So, so. This, this is why I, I'm not going to say I honored you. You earned that. But I just want to put it out there. I appreciate yeah, like, that. You're going to respect that. No, I appreciate you. I appreciate that. I no appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, so, it's funny how, like, when you're in it, when you're in it, you're not thinking about how it's going to look afterwards. You know, you just living your dream, you know? You just competing and you want to be the best and, you know, all that comes with that. You know, certain things, like, I was always cognizant of being the first, though. Like, I always was aware of being the first. And when a coach or somebody would point out certain little rivalries and things, I took it on, you know? I was very much always connected to my borough as far as girls basketball. Like, that was always my thing. I'm going to put my burrow on my back. Y'all going to respect Brooklyn. I'm tired of driving out here to Manhattan and y'all just looking at us like light work, right? So, yeah, when, I mean, now in hindsight, I look at it like, you know, 
Yeah, I guess that would be like legendary status. Yes. <laughs> that, that, is, that is. Trust me. I talk to a lot of them on here. Trust me. You know, and I'm putting it out there. Right? <laughs> so it comes with that, right? Right. I know there was some growth during your time. Who was that female who asked you, bus that let you know you was that top dog in the city? Hmm. What was that game? What was that game when you like, I got to do my best because I know she's going to bring her all. And it's her and myself, mano on mano. Uh, um, the game, that the closest game that I felt something close to that was when we had to play Paul Robeson to get mm -hmm. to the garden. So, and the only reason why I say that was because they had Kendra Nelson, Jenny Canty, uh, but literally that entire Paul Robinson team was the summer league team that I played with. And now we in, yes. And Barney, he was our coach. So now it was like, I felt like I was playing my family. It was mm -hmm. them against me. I mean, and my team, of course. And that game, I would say, is the closest game that brought that feeling out of me. Because Kendra was amazing, you know? And I knew, like, okay, this is it. Like, this is where you got to put friendship to the side, and you just got to – you got to give it to him. Like, he – this is – you know, he taught you, so show him – you know, let him know he did a good job. And it hurt at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt because I know they wanted to go on. But I knew that that was my senior year, and we wanted to get to the gardens. And to get to the garden, we had to get through Paul Robeson at South Shore. And and then no, we actually that was a playoff game. So I don't remember the school we played. We had to play them at South Shore early in the season, but in the playoffs we had to play them too. And we had and we ended up beating them. And we beat them. I ended up like blocking Jenny's shot like four times in a row at the end of the game. <laughs> and I had like four fouls. It was a whole thing, bro. It was crazy. How many, how many points did you have? Huh? How many points did you have? You remember? Not I think like 23, 24, something like that. Uh, it was something like, like that. Some light, some light. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. The, and that game, though, the defense defense was what was really needed. Cause, and it was crazy because Mr. Goldsmith, he had a whole defensive scheme. And I'm like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but I got to stop Kendra. Period. Like, you they can do that. You knew who, that, with who, the top, yes. who the top girl on the team was. Period. Yes. So whatever you're saying, I know that boy will end up back with Kendra. So I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> Salute to Kendra wherever you are. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's a, you must Kendra's a problem. Yeah, she was a problem. She was a problem. She was definitely a problem. Mm -hmm. For real. For real. Wow. So back then, what was the difference in that PSL Catholic school game, which you kind of took over and stole the show? It was like I was just tired. I mean, I didn't like. I didn't like. You know, back then, you know, PSAL players we was looked at as like wow and uncoachable. You yes. Know, and athletic with no brain. Taking class to the Catholic school. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, I took that personally. So I'm like, yo, I'm I'm gonna show you. We gonna show you. And and now watch this. And then it was just a. It was like something just clicks, and you go. You just go. You just go to the next level. You just go. Now, you, you was playing with your homegirl from Robeson. Y'all was like, okay, now we teaming up and we going to Yes, and that too. And I'm playing with my homies. Like, come on, let's do this. Like, I'm tired of them. You know, we they talk about us like, like we can't we can't run and chew gum. Like, all we can do is fast break. We can't run these plays. Let's do this. Let's show them and stop them and kill them. And just, you know, let's make them think about playing another sport. Like, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> Listen, I, I never forget. Um, we up in Glen Falls, and we got to play Malloy. They got Kenny Anderson. He's like the number one freshman in the country. They're standing in the balcony, and we're like downstairs. Mm. And they kind of like looking down on us. They had the fly ass, yeah. sky blue and white, yeah, warm up <laughs> with the car versus that all of the match. Have you asked like some I would, I would, you can ask anybody. I would warm up. They were like faded. They were like Adidas, but not Adidas, because some had two stripes, some had one, some had two. But we born with pride. Like, you know, the Catholic school new guys had everything, man. Yeah, so for sure, for sure. Definitely understand that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that was a big deal. Even to this day, they get to play inside the gym, 
the PSAL. They probably won't get a chance to play. They'll tomorrow land to play outside. Oh, oh wow. wow. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah they said they want to keep them safe. No spectators. <laughs> <laughs> you know what day they want to play? What? <laughs> I just found this out today. What day? They lose to uh, New York City legend Richie Carson. Saturday. Saturday. With all the hood dudes in all the neighborhoods is in the park. Wow. Yeah, that's woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be something special. They need to play in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. let's move on. Yeah. Dang. Y'all, y'all, y'all scoffed them out, right? Charles. Yeah. We gave him work. We gave him work. Yeah. For sure. For sure. sure. So, what was those girls who was there, Erasmus and, and Robeson, were those girls the girls that gave y'all the most problems? No. No. Um, who, who, what, was, what team that gave y'all the most problems and what girl gave y'all the most fits? Okay. Um, in Brooklyn, for us, during my time, John Jay was like, the Detroit Pistons to us. Like, Woo! they, that was some big girls. <laughs> and they were strong. And Lasasso, he had Jessica Cabrera. They had a strong team, and they played together in the summertime. So by the time the school season came around, they was ready. They, they was a whole, all, all positions, Romaine, all of them. They was, that was the toughest team for us in Brooklyn. We, when we knew, like, we couldn't get out of Brooklyn. Without getting past John Jay. And then Paul, first Paul Robeson, but we had to come through John Jay, period. Because they 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 was repping Brooklyn hard too. They just couldn't get out of that first round. They couldn't be the city team, you know? Uh so John Jay was that team for us in Brooklyn. I mean, play a lot. I can't I'm not trying to be a you know it had there wasn't a player that I felt like, oh my god, like, you know. The closest one would be Nikki McCrimmon. Mm. Like she, you just knew what, what school was she at? What school was she at? I don't remember mm. what high school Nikki went to school. I want to say Nikki went to Bertram. Okay, okay. Nikki, she was a problem. Like she was a guard. She done playing for the Sparks and everything. Mm. Um, but then you had August Martin, of course, as a team. But they always went through five down the line. They had legitimate Division One players at every position, you know. And then of course their star player at the time was Ron Singleton. She was like two, two, three guard, but it, it wasn't nothing that I felt like I couldn't. There wasn't a player that I felt like gave me a problem. I know the teams that gave my teams a problem, though. Listen, I understand why you're saying that. Rebecca <laughs> Smith said she will walk around the high school with an ankle weight on. <laughs> did not care how it looked. I did not care. A person, even think about one person who's gonna give them a problem. <laughs> she walk around with ankle weights on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you remember that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, yeah. Man. Listen, you were the problem. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and then wow, I can't. That's crazy. <laughs> what, what, what was your recruiting process like for you? And what schools did you visit? Man, okay, so the recruiting, it was like a whole explosion. I went to one camp, BC All-Stars, and after that, I got like a thousand letters. It was just so, it was a lot. It was a whole lot. Um, I visited Howard University. I visited University of Virginia. I did an a informal visit to Seton Hall. Um... It ended up being a toss-up between Howard and UVA. And I ended up choosing UVA because, um, you know, I, they, they, was, they was in Final Fours. They had Don Staley. They had the Twins. So, yeah, I ended up going for the ACC. Yeah. Yeah. I have a theory about the UVA and New York City players. Yes. Yeah, we don't do well down there for some reason. No. And I'm not even saying talent-wise. It's just... Something always happens down there with some of us. Yes, for me, it was like... For my God, we all talking, we go back, Ernie Myers, yeah. John Johnson, yeah. my God, Jamal Robinson. 
Yeah. Yeah, it just still. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, my guy broke the I think with the Virginia before he transferred. Yeah. It'll come to me. Yeah. 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 So, like, and the thing is, when I went to UVA, I had to sit out because I had two of my ACL in, 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 the, um, in the All Star game. But right after the season, and I'm playing the All Star game, twisted my knee, kind of find out my ACL was torn. So Ooh. just dealing with the sit out itself. But then now that I'm not, I can't practice and I'm not playing games. I was really much just doing rehab and stuff and just the campus life and everything like that. Just it didn't fit. Like being in New York City, I didn't take that into account when I made that decision. It's very rural. And it's just a different yeah. mindset. Yeah. <laughs> Charlottesville ain't no totally. talk, bro. <laughs> that play that play name, I think that I think Gary Forbes was down there as well. And then wind up transfer. I'm, I'm not sure, but I think. Right. Or Robinson. That's crazy. Yeah. So now <laughs> what makes you decide to go to the Northeastern? Oh my I, so think that's, I think I thought that was a great move. Yeah, so now, when I decided that I wasn't going to go back to Virginia, um, my best friend, Kathleen Jones, she had signed to go to Northeastern University. She went to Oldest Martin. And I knew all the players already at Northeastern because most of them came from Oldest Martin or New York City School. My coach joined my show. She was very faithful and just very committed to, like, helping New York City ball players. That's and I awesome. just felt like, you know, Boston is not too far from New York. Um, and I still, you know, be with my friends. Culturally, it wasn't that much of a shock. And so right. that's why I ended up going to, to Northeast. And I didn't, you know, I didn't think about records and things like that. I just wanted to play and be happy, be comfortable, you know. So Northeast was a good fit for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my guy, uh, BK Kondo. Yeah, she mentioned Kendra. Yes. She mentioned Kendra Nelson from Robinson. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah. and Kendra, we, that's like my buddy, but we, we. We came up together. We came up under Barney. We came up under Mr. Davis. We are original Mika players. Original. Like, yes. Listen, I need you to do me a favor. Because I'm having, uh, um, who are coming on here? Get a name, Corey from Virtual. Uh -huh. Right? I want to, I need someone to plump me to most of the female basketball players. It's easy to get the guys. Uh -huh. Right? But I feel a lot of times you guys are left out of the the story, right? right. And right. I want to make sure you guys' story gets told because years later somebody's gonna write your story, and it's not gonna be from your word. It's gonna right. be from somebody else's insight who probably right. never really saw you play. Right, 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 right. right. So we want to make sure that this this history is documented, and these females are not left out of this scenario. Okay. I can definitely help you with that because it's a lot of us. No, nah, for sure. It's a sure. lot of us, especially on the PSAL side. We yeah. some beasts. Marcy Carnegie, Khadija Pope, like, listen, beast, beast. Like, well, I'll be like, okay. Because mind you, this is all new to me. But every time they walk, I'm like, okay, it's time to play. Like, let's do this. It's no light work, nothing. You know, we're not sleepy today. We, we ready today. <laughs> That's real. That's real. So, what was the transition like once you got to Northeast and off and on the court, right? New school, new environment. Um, so the transition actually it really so I had to sit out when I got there, but this time it it wasn't it was a, it was a smooth transition. You know, mentally I knew I couldn't play in games, so I used every practice to me was a game. I know I got on my teammates nerves because I was going harder and harder. But I'm, in my mind, I'm like, y'all don't understand. I don't get to play tomorrow. <laughs> like, I don't get to go on the bus with y'all. Um, so the transition wasn't that hard. And um, the hardest thing for me with Northeastern, though, was like, I felt like they were, the culture, it really wasn't like a winning culture, per se. It was like, I don't, yeah. It, so the, the hardest thing for me was, um, Accepting mediocre. Say, I'll stand for you. Accepting <laughs> mediocre. Because they just turned around till you got there. 
Right. Yeah. So like that was the hardest thing for me. But like I knew that when it was my time to play. So I know I was coming when I came in. I knew I had Karen. I had Felicia. Like I saw my team. I saw the team that I was gonna be playing with. So I didn't really have too much worry with the physicality. But you know, winning is a mindset. You know what I'm saying? And it takes a lot of work to turn it out, turn it around. I, I just I remember my coach. I remember Joy said, and it's, it always stuck out of my mind because it was like she flipped the switch in my head. And she said to all of us one day, she was like, your record does not define you. I guess she felt that I was feeling dejected at some point. But and, and that's all she had to say. And after that, it was, I was, we was on. I, okay, fine. Now, we're not even going to look at the record right now. And we ended up, I think, finishing 500 that year. That was my first year um, playing with them. But when she said that, I was like, okay, that's cool. She's right. All right, okay. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, honestly, yes, definitely. Definitely. It said that, and I read this in the intro, all this set a new standard for Northeastern North University post players and elevated the stature of Northeastern basketball throughout the nation. Yeah, we had a good run. I had a good... Let's make some noise for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a good run. Listen, I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it clear. Not too many people can say, you know, when I showed up, that's when we started winning. A lot of us <laughs> go to these schools. Look, I went to the family things and girls built in a new gym, and they just came from back for the, for the tournament. I knew they was going to the tournament. They had a winning tradition. Nobody's really going to the losing school and say, you know what? I'm going to take this school from the bottom and take it to the top. Right. That right. really happens. Yeah. When you doing that. Trust me. That's what I'm saying. That legendary status. <laughs> yeah. Real talk. Yeah. So, now, this is the James Mason's question. James Mason with the Bishop Lockland and started at Seton Hall. Mm -hmm. James, I got your t-shirt coming. Say, yo, gee, can, I'm going to buy a hoodie, but can I get the t-shirt for the James Mason's question? The James Mason's question is, how much money did you guys get on the road for meal money? Because from 1983 to 1986, he was at Seton Hall and they got $5 a day. Biggie's basketball. Mm. Mm. No, actually, we didn't get. That's crazy. <laughs> they didn't have dollar bills back then. So just... <laughs> <laughs> Yay. No, actually, I think we, we didn't get money. Cause we just we had to just we just went out to eat. We didn't. She didn't divvy it up. We just ate together. So honestly, I don't even know. I don't. Yeah, I, and I don't know how much the money that comes to the to the girls program. It wasn't a lot though. Right, because the girls and I was yeah. doing it, and they didn't get what we what we got. But right. you know, I just like to ask that because you know. There's this, uh, a stipend. So they just say, like, you guys play Duke or North Carolina. Mm hmm Right? What mm -hmm. big school did y'all play? Uh, We played Duke. We, we, we went on tour okay. there. Okay. So, you know, Duke gave y'all university some money. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm going to break this down, how college basketball works. Uh, in some instances, especially in this. What up? A bigger school plays a smaller school. Uh -huh. The bigger school pays that, sc that school a check. Right? It's called Bio Win. Uh -huh. Something like that. Uh -huh. so Mark Robinson, I think, no, I think Terrence Brencher, somebody else just confirmed it still goes on to this day. Mm -hmm. They're not telling y'all, but they basically bound to win. Right? Wow. Now, if they lose, they're upset. Because they, they bought a loss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no upsets in pro sports because everybody getting paid. Get out of here. My coach told me that in 1990. I had no idea that I was... Mm. I didn't know. We, I walked in the office and he was just happy as hell. I'm like, what you so happy for, coach? He said, we got way farther than two years. I said, for real? I said, yes. Looked at the, the check. He says, 80,000. 
Mr. Harding. I said, that's yours? He said, no, it's the university. He said, what? Harding, sit down. He said, Harding, sit down. Let me explain to you how this works. Remember we always told y'all college basketball is a business? Yeah. This is part of the business of college basketball. Wow. I had no, I, I didn't know that at all. I never looked at college basketball the same again. Yeah. Wow. And I'm probably, I'm not going to look at it the same again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you call enlightenment, right? Right, right. Okay. Right, right. So, I know this came at a loss, right? But that 30 point, 13 rebound against me, what was happening during that game? And how frustrated were you at the end of that game? Okay. So, we played at the University of Maine. They had a female, you know, they had this player, her name was Cindy Blodgett. Um, the gym was packed. You got to understand, that's Bangor, Maine. So, all they, all they have to do is follow their sports team. And I, I, I played at NCI, so I know. So, you understand. Yeah. So, it was like a gym full of people from Maine. And here we coming up from Northeastern. I wasn't frustrated because I could legitimately say I gave it every piece of gas in me. I gave it my all. To that, to that whistle blew, I gave it my all. I feel like my teammates did as well. But Maine was a very, very strong team across the board, like position one through five. Um, but, we, you know, we, we, we gave them a run. I feel like, like if somehow if the game wasn't at Maine, I think we would have probably fared better. The energy was just amazing for them. Um I, I, you know, it's it's over and done now. I didn't agree with the referee. Just, you know, just the flow of the game. They didn't let us get into a flow. You know, we weren't, anything we did, we definitely got the whistle. <laughs> so, you know, it got to a point, I think I, I had four, I was playing on four fouls for a while, for a, a, a good portion of that game. So, kind of, I had to, like, Take a step back on my defensive edge, and that's you know couldn't really, I couldn't I couldn't fight like I wanted to, not all the way across the board, but we gave it our all for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I understand when the team goes out of town, uh, how they can be treated sometimes. Uh, I remember Ray Haskins sharing with me when he took Alexander Hamilton down to play against Dunbar mm. and McKinley Tech. They beat McKinley Tech, but lost to Dunbar by one point. And he said, somehow, the officials took away seven of their points. Yeah. They just took it away. Just like, yeah. All yeah. right, I'm going to eat this. Come back. And he still lost by one. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, this, it was, I mean, it was happening so fast. And in hindsight, like, after you get older and you kind of learn different dynamics of the game and psychology and just, environment it, that was a very main going to Maine and going to Vermont was like culture shock for us you know because they were just a little bit different up there you know pro teams we <laughs> love the college sports up there yeah and yeah. hockey is, is big I actually went down and saw uh a game because we played at Northeastern so Reggie Lewis played but then um before that uh there was a hockey game yeah, yeah, we have. I, I, I was surprised to see them switch the floor. It was amazing to me being a college kid. I'm from, you know, yeah, New York. Yeah, you know, playing on top of the ice. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we don't go to the garden to see the Rangers on the albums, right? So, right, right, right. <laughs> but for me to see that as a kid, I was just so amazed. Like, yeah, holy yeah, yeah. They switched out the floor. They put that floor over the ice. Absolutely, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And Northeastern, yeah, hockey is big. We got national yeah. championships and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Hockey crazy, is big. Crazy. Crazy. So, when they have the inaugural WNBA, right? Their first year. Mm -hmm. Were you drafted or did you have to try out? What was the process? I had to try out. Uh, I wasn't drafted. Uh, I, I always say my politics, once I walk, once I, I knew, when I left Virginia, I understood what that meant for my basketball politics. But I was fine with it. You understand? 
So I knew I wasn't going to get drafted. And I was too anxious to wait to be invited to a training camp. So I paid the application fee. I didn't have money for a plane ticket, and I took the bus. And I, my plan was to try. I had paid to pay to try out for Charlotte. And then after that, I was supposed to try out for the Liberty, just on how they schedule the tryouts. So I'm going to hit all the East Coast teams, and then if I had to get on the bus or whatever, go wherever, I just want to try out. So I went to the show to try out. I, I'll never forget, I had money or nothing, man. But I was walking around, I had a bag of bagels and a gallon of water for the day. And when I wasn't playing, I'd sit in the corner of the gym, eat some bagels, drink some water. And it was like, that experience was like, this is Sparta. When, when they announced that we were having the WNBA, literally it was like a thousand, a thousand girls there. Everybody just wanted a piece of that dream. And out of all those people, they were only going to pick two. One was going to be on the team. The other one was going to be an alternate. <laughs> and when I tell you, I got to play. And my thing was always, I never cared about an award, a newspaper article. It was my peers. Like, I wanted to be one of those players that my peers respected. So once my, I started playing against people from different cities, when I tell you the best players from Maryland, the best players from North Carolina, like, all of us were there trying to make this team. And every, after every session, you go and you try to you see if your number is still to, to play on. And I kept seeing my little number. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I didn't even have to, by the last um, workout, they told me, we want you on this team, but the only way we're going to give you this spot, you cannot try out for the Liberty. And the Liberty tryout was the next week. <laughs> How are you going to tell you you can't try out for your home? They say family? if I tried out for the Liberty, then, you know, they would, I, you know, and I got it. I understood it. And I, politics, and I had to make the decision. Politics. Exactly. And I had to make the decision. So I was like, okay, because I knew I made it. You know what I'm saying? I balled out. That was like the best basketball. At that point in my life, that was the best basketball that I ever played. It was just so fulfilling to play against everybody. It's really just show yourself because we that's what we were doing. And so they said, we, we're going to put you, we'll give you the spot, but you can't go to the next week's tryout for the Liberty. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to show this thing. And that's, that was it. I didn't even try out for the Liberty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was amazing though. Wow. It was amazing. Get to put the uniform on. First game. What's the feeling like? Where are you? And what are the emotions like? So the whole WNBA thing. So now you gotta understand. <laughs> when I was in high school, I went to a game at St. John's. St. John's was playing in North Carolina State. I remember Andrea Spencer. I remember saying, yo, she played like Michael Jordan. And back then, we didn't get to see females on TV. But I, she was instantly one of my favorite players. Spencer is no joke. So now you're telling me I'm on the team with Andrea Spencer. <laughs> like, I spent most of the time, I was just like awestruck. Because that was it for me. Baby, listen. Spencer, it was, hey. Hands up and down, hands down. She's amazing, okay? Her basketball IQ, off the charts, like, amazing. So just playing with her, period, that was just, and then I had Vicky Bullet. We had Ronda Mapp. We went to the championship. We lost the first year. We ended up losing to Houston in the championship game at Houston. Now, they had Shell Swoops. They had Coop. I remember. I, I watched those games. Yeah, that whole experience, that was just next level for me. You know, I, I was on the other end of the basketball curve. Everything came late, so I'm still trying to, like, catch up. I'm going – I had to switch from, like, playing primarily inside. I had to – I was still working on my footwork and everything as far as being a swing, swing player. And so, you know, I didn't get much time, but the experience was crazy. That was amazing. Uh, it was just an amazing atmosphere to be in. But every, whenever I got an opportunity, I made the most of it. You know, I just wanted to be a good, you know, teammate and just learn as much as I could. So that, that was just amazing. That, that was, it was just, it was like basketball heaven every day. And then, then we were playing it, like, in the arenas, like, in the Charlotte 
when, you know, in the, the actual on the floors. You know what I mean? Like, we are in the, the L.A., you know, in L.A., like, we're, we're really doing this, like, NBA courts. It was amazing, man. It was really good. I made some great friends and some really good connections, and it was just a life-changing, life-changing, life-changing. I tell people all the time, you know, and especially come from people who never played the game. It's always like, you know, they ain't last. And they ain't do this and they ain't do that. I said, yo, you know what I would give to be able to put NBA socks on in a locker room? Man. To just get dressed up and run out the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I'm going to pay and then look up. That whole field, that you can't, you can't buy that. You can't put no nah. price tag on that. You can't. You can't right? not at all. People that never experience that, it's easy for them to say that. It's easy for them to say that. But they don't know how hard it takes to get there. To even get there, to get the uniform, to put, the uniform, to put on the socks. Right. Is, yeah, that's it's that in itself. You know, but you well, you know, you have these kind of conversations. I, I honestly I don't really talk basketball because I can tell. And I remember like Michael Jordan had like a he was explaining that he don't really like to talk basketball or something. He's like it's like a doctor talking to a garbage man about how to do brain surgery. Like, he, why would you even try to have that conversation? Just let him, you know, let him think what he, you know, I don't really, I don't really talk basketball because it's so personal. It's such a personal thing to me, you know, so it, it, it's right up there. Like, I don't talk basketball, I don't talk politics. <laughs> Stay away from religion. Well, I'm glad you came on so we had a chance to talk because what, what happened in the beginning, a lot of guys who felt like they didn't do what they were supposed to do were, were afraid to come on. You know, I, I didn't do too much. I, didn't, I wasn't like that. And they don't, and they mind, they feel like that. But they don't know all the people who are watching them. You have no idea how many people come up and comment on other people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I remember such and such. Remember such and such did this? And, right. they, and they know. Uh, Kenny Anderson was up here, and people were typing on things he couldn't even remember. Right, and right. And I don't you got to realize, people watch everything that you did. Right. You this did back true. then. That's true. That's true. Right? Start the show. Ross Strickland, come on the show, it's like, yo, bro, I've been checking out what you've been saying. You know, because I'm talking about my Linky Gods, how we, my two Linky Gods, Simple Spice is the best, it's like, you know, poking the bear a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, I was going to come on the show regardless, but, you know, you never know watching. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. Talk. Listen, you ain't never gonna hear us on basketball head talking about somebody's scandal, right? So the negative stuff that was in the paper, we ain't here for that. Right, right. We here, right. We here to make sure that people remember their greatness. Right, uh, right. We talk to artists. Right, right, right. You know, because I feel like when I hear about new people, especially New York City bowlers, did so well. I'm so proud and happy because I know what it takes. Right, but it's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's ten million of us here in New York City. Not the state. The city. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> you come up, people, and those special ones. Hey, got number love for you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. look. Things that WNBA didn't turn around how you wanted to, but you flew off the country and made your home someplace else. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. My first year overseas, well, the thing is, I was playing overseas before the WNBA. The, by the time the WNBA, yeah. So you were doing the Cam Hampton thing. They yeah. called you back later on to get, to get down. Yeah, so I, I had oh. my, I, I played in Israel first. But no, my first country, the first place I went overseas was Germany. I did a season in Germany. The next season I did Israel, and then I did Turkey. Okay. So when I played in, in for Charlotte, I was coming home. I came home from Israel. I mean, I'm sorry, from Germany, and that's when I made Charlotte. So I was already overseas. You know what I'm saying? I was already, I was already a professional. You know. So, and, and the money is way different overseas than over here in the States. Oh, definitely. And, you know, you, you got to look at it. I mean, yeah, it is. And also the season. So, like, you know, when you play overseas, that's a full, full season. And the WNBA, we only had three months. The money was way different. But, yeah, I was already overseas before 
they announced the WBA. So yeah, yeah. Okay. First, do you speak the different languages? Um, at one point, because I ended up saying I love, I fell in love with Turkey. I was very fluent in Turkish, extremely fluent. Yeah, I picked it up. That was my thing. Was like honestly, I was gonna stay. I wasn't gonna come home. But you know, things didn't work out. I got to a car accident. That's how my career ended on a car accident. Wow. I wasn't driving. We had a great game. Um, I would say the last game I played, in my opinion, and for me to say this is real, was the best game I played in my life. I had put myself on this crazy workout regimen, right? So I, it was just, I was ready. Because like I said, I had that learning curve. So the thing with the WNBA, I never felt a way about it because I knew I was learning a new position. I was going from playing four, and I legitimately had to learn how to be a consistent two, three. So that's going to take time. So that's what I was using. Yeah, that's what I was using overseas for. So I was ready. Like, that was the best game I ever played. We had a great game. We won. And the next day, we was driving to Istanbul to hang out with other Americans. My guard was driving. Had run the map. Run the map. She was my big girl in the back seat. Had my seatbelt on everything in the passenger seat. We got into a car accident. That was it. That was it. They, they was okay. They played the next game. That was it for me. Like, I passed away and everything in the accident. It took me like 14 surgeries just to to be able to walk without a cane or crutches or assistance. No. Yeah, it was, it was. But I can say, like, at one point in my life, that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Honestly, now, that's like one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. Like, I, I had to learn so much about myself. Whereas I thought I was a strong person, I had no idea. So, like, right now, when I tell you I feel invincible, <laughs> <laughs> like invincible out here, bro. <laughs> it's next oh, level, you know. <laughs> I'm super, super proud of you, and I'm glad you worked and everything worked out. In your yeah, head. I think. I mean, it took some time. It took me like after the accident, I, had, like, I couldn't fly home for like nine months, and then like, it took 14 surgeries just to be able to not have to use a cane, not have to, you know, use crutches, and and they had told me you're not gonna be able to walk on your own. And the lady, when I woke up, was a little Turkish nurse, and she's like, uh, you a miracle. And I'm like, what? She showed me. I got flatlined and everything. Uh, it, was, uh, it was deep. But it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. It sounds crazy, but it really was. Nah, you get the, the, best, thing, <laughs> the best thing you can do is get to know yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And know just, yeah. 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 It, just, it, it brought everything back, and it put me in the right perspective. It took a lot of work. But I just feel like, you know, when I talk to people, I'm speaking from experience. You know, I talk about perseverance and not giving up and your mind, mind over matter and things like that. And just perspective and paradigms and all that. Like, I, I'm comfortable. I've had that type of conversation with anybody, you know. So, yeah. Well, and if that didn't happen, this, I wouldn't be able to. This is a shameless plug from the woman I talked about earlier, Dr. Laura Milley. Okay, she's okay. Rich, rich. She experienced the same thing in college, the psyche of the injured athlete. Yes, yes. And she talked about, you know, not only the physical part, right? The physical. Mm -hmm. The hardest part, the emotional part. Yeah, yeah. Because I took it, honestly, I took it like failure. Like, I did something. I was ashamed. And it, it was no reason to be ashamed, but for some reason, I felt ashamed. And I just, it was really hard. Like, I couldn't even look at basketball i couldn't watch it i didn't want to talk about it i didn't get like so i started coaching at kingsborough i was the head coach of kingsborough right yes yes for me that was just like that was like me to put my pinky toe to see can i take this it was like a breakup like i don't want to see that person you know you left me <laughs> right 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 um but you know, so coaching kids, bro, it, I love my kids. Like, I'm connected to all of the kids I had for those two years. It was That was an amazing experience. But more so, that was that was for me, and it was for me to give to them, you know? But, yeah, it was a difficult, it was a hard road, but I wouldn't change it, honestly. I would not change it for the world. That's dope. That's dope. So, I need to know who was the top high school, college, and pro player you played against. Three. High school, college, and pro. Hmm. High school. Mm. I would go with 
Kendra Nelson. Nelson. College. Hello. She went to Robeson. Uh, yeah, I yeah. go with Kendra. Hello, yeah. College. I'm gonna go for this girl from the University of Vermont, Sherry Turnbull. She was a beast. Mm. She was a, she was a center beast. Pro, honestly, um, that's a tie. Then that's a tie between Cheryl Swoops and Cynthia Cooper. And I don't realize it's a tie because it's just you don't know what day who hey. will be the finisher. They they was this next level. Like they playing against them showed me, oh, I got work to do. You understand? And yeah. them two right here. Is, I didn't know. Cynthia Cooper was on that damn USC team. Yes! Do you know how many times I watched them play? Never <laughs> heard her name. Y'all was so bad when I watched that documentary. Because I was like, damn! Yeah. And this people that played like 18 years old season came yeah. back to the WNBA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cynthia was, was so nice. Yeah, no, she was a... When I tell you... You got to be on the court with her. Like, it's, it was magical. Show was that way, too. Magical. But like, then magical. sometimes, having that big head and that ultra ego. Yeah. But she had a lot to prove, though. Like, and I understood her. She was very driven. Coop was driven. And nobody really understood No, not, not, not Cooper. Not Cooper. I'm saying Cheryl Miller. Oh, her, too. Yeah. She, she was good. But I just think it was just too inflated. And, and somebody else needed the rise, and it was Coop. Yeah, yeah, Coop did that. She did that. And I think that's what motivated Coop, honestly. That that's why she did what she did. And I got it. And I, I respected every inch of it. But between her and, and uh, Cheryl Swoops, boy, them two right there, beast. Never, I have never seen anything like that before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. All right, so now we're going to get into our top five. And since you rep Brooklyn, I just took the whole NYC off. And I want you to name the top five female ballers from Brooklyn. Mm, from Brooklyn? That's an OSC, y'all. Yeesh. All right, we got <laughs> Rhonda Singleton, Kendra Nelson, um, hmm, what point you put me in there? Um, for my era, Khadija Posey, Trina Ooh. Strowman. Mm. Um, you keep going if you want. Aaliyah Jones. You we got Aaliyah Jones. Aaliyah Jones, she's one of the young guys that I got to know. I think she ended up going to Nazareth. She was special, too. She definitely, as far as, like, one of the newer players. Yes, yeah. Any day. I would take her on my team any day. That girl the ball. I remember when she was a little girl, and she was just playing with the ball, and I saw it. I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, she was the truth. Um, who else? Mm, I don't want to stop right there. All right, that's yeah. good. Top five hip hop artists. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Biggie. Uh, I like Kendrick Lamar. Nice. J. Cole, I do J. Cole. Some people, I, I, I understand Kanye. <laughs> Kanye. Kanye, Kanye is what, it, what, it, what he is. But yeah, yeah, he's a genius, music. so he just Can't musically, the music, though. Yeah, musically, I, I can rock with him. He's a genius musically, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I would go with that, yeah. Yeah, my guy, and I was talking earlier, and I was saying, for me, Kanye's first three albums, Oh. It was damn near perfect. Yes, yes. Production, everything. Yes, yes, yes. I appreciate his musical genius, for sure. I'm not going to take away from that. He's a genius. He is a genius. Now, I'm going to throw another album in there, right? Mm -hmm. Which I thought was a perfect album from beginning to end. I would say three. Jay-Z's Black Album. Yes. Perfect, yes. Run to the back. Yes. Front to back. Front to back. You don't have to skip a song. No. 
50s get rich and die trying. Oh, yeah, 50s my guy. He's in my top five, too. Like, <laughs> that's my guy. Ooh, I from love him. From beginning to end? From beginning to end? <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm going to take it back to year when I graduated from school. This album I bumped to I express the CD. <laughs> and that was Snoop Dogg's first album. Okay. Okay, doggy style. I got you. Yeah. Doggy style. Doggy style. And then I'm going to put into the stage Black Moon. Oh. Those two albums was banging back to back, back to back. Back to back. Yeah, you didn't let it skip a song. You just, yeah, you just let that rock. Yes. <laughs> that rock. I was in the hall of them. I was my home girl, my wet house, and we just bumped those albums. Yeah, yeah. DJ Richie, or uh, MC Richie Richie to be up there as well. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So listen, not going to hold you too long. You was a Awesome guest. Thank you. And I'm glad you <laughs> came on Basil Head and talked to me. Yo, Omeka, I love you, brother. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you, Michael. That's my boy, boy. Point, Point God. God. Point God. Point God. For real. <laughs> so now you get a chance to nominate. And since we talked about getting more female presence on this platform, Mm -hmm. You get to nominate who you want and how many females you want. And I'll spread it out to make sure they all get love. Now, we can spread it out to different boroughs. That would be cool, too. But you know, I'm from Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn, so we don't really care about that. But I would love to get a lot of the other girls that's in the city and show them some love. Mm hmm so I'm definitely, um, oh, wow, okay. So, yes, uh, I'm looking at some. oh, wow, scrubbing. okay, cool. Just got a good confirmation for another female baller. But look, awesome. you don't have to say it now. You can DM me and say, okay. the these are the females who I think should be on the platform. They have a great story. Gotcha. And this story needs to be told. I sure will. I sure will. I appreciate you. Nah, I appreciate it. It was fun. I had a lot of fun. Trust yeah, me. this was really fun. I had a good time. Thank you so much. Nah, nah. Thank you appreciate so much. You. All right, hey, guys. listen. Hold on, hold on. Because I know I forget some time. Awesome. All right, so there he is right now, Jamel Powell. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I can see it. That's so nice. Thank I'm in the car right now, but I'm going for it. Wow. Yeah. That is, thank you. That's nice. Yo, Mel. What? Yo. Mel, I messed up on the, on the lane. She don't have a T at the end. That was my mistake. Oh, okay. All right, I'll fix it. All right. Thank you. No doubt. <laughs> that is really nice. All right, brother. Man. That's that picture from the uh, Daily News. Yeah, I see. Yeah, appreciate you, Mel. Mm. All right, my brother. Thank you. And you also can DM me your information, and we'll get that out to you. I'm going to be sending out um, some pictures this weekend. So uh, definitely want to connect. Definitely want to send me those uh, other guests. All right? Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, too. You have a great night. You, too. Thank you. All right, people. Thanks for joining us. Awesome, awesome show. Yo, some of the stuff you learn about our New York City ballers and their transition out of basketball, I'm glad to say that 99.9% .9 of the people who came on the show, say everyone who came on the show, they leave basketball and they're in a better place. Basketball helped people become better people. Can't knock it. Hey, she was a beast too. So don't forget, Katasha Artis, New York City legend, sufficient. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding, and you've been watching Basketball Heads. We are the fish you home for New York City basketball. I got to show y'all here.
Y'all ready? Y'all ready? 